Hey guys, James Wolf here, and today, another episode of 80 Days. This time, something a little different. This is going to be the entire adventure in one episode. This is going to be, um, start to finish the entire journey from London back to London around the world. But hopefully we can do it in 80 days. I haven't looked up any way to do it fair, or do it in 80 days. I'm just going off. My knowledge of what I learned the last couple times I've played it, which was a while ago. The last time I played it was the last uh, was the last time it was uploaded on the channel. This is um, day one of the reboot. Let's see how long this whole shit lasts. Alrighty, without any further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna try and do the voice, the voices. I may not be very good at them, and I may just start reading them out in my normal voice, but. Let's see how long it lasts. <clears throat> I have entered into the service of a new gentleman. It would seem... He is a gambling man. Presents... In association with Cape Guy. Directed by John Ingold and Joseph Humphrey. Script <laughs> by Meg Janeth. You can see all my old roots. Cool. PC Mac editions by Ben Nicholson. Eighty days. Woohoo! We're already two minutes in and finally passed the load. <laughs> finally passed the uh, what's it called? Um, startup screen. Jules Verne. I'm gonna do these every now and again because I really do like the game and I will always try and improve myself. All right, ready? London. Let us begin. My master returned home. <clears throat> My master returned home from the Reform Club with a strange gleam in his eye. Pespetia, we are, he said, said he, we are going around the world. Pack my cloak in my evening jacket. There is not a moment to waste. You, Pespetia, now have funds. <laughs> Why the fuck would we go to Cambridge? Come on. Computer's running a tiny bit slow. Hold on, I just wanna... Bombay. Actually, the one from Bombay may help us. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Now that now that we know the routes, we can get rid of that. To put the evening jacket up there and the traveling cloak down here. I wish we had room for top hat, but parting now. Come on. Come on! You can do it. You can do it. We left aboard the A25 from Charing Cross Station, er, from Charing Cross, as the final whistle shrieked 
Alert warning. Our journey has had begun. I love how... Normally, it's like, oh yeah, we need to buy tickets, and then the conductor raps on the door going, Tickets, please. No, we just, we jumped aboard. They know us by now. Begin conversation. Greetings, Monsieur Vern. Vesperture, did you say your name was? What a curious appellation. Paris. I'm very interested in Paris. I've heard the World's Fair is being held in Paris this year. Um, Paris to Zurich. I would not hold out too much hope, monsieur. But answer me this. Tell me what your journey is about. A wager. A wager, monsieur, nothing more. A wager, what a marvelously simple way to motivate an adventure. Paris. Go back to Paris. Nice. You have to ask my secretary, but some buyers will pay well for woolen cloaks from Nice. Um, you'd have to ask my secretary, but yada yada yada, blah blah blah, um, by f olive oil. Okay, goodbye, monsieur. You may notice that my voice is also cutting in and out when I stop talking, it fades quickly. Um, that is because I have a noise gate on my microphone because my sister has a rodent in the living room over 10 feet to my right. And he runs on his wheel all night long, and his wheel is rather noisy, so the noise gate helps uh, eliminate the pickup of that noise. But it also causes my voice to fade out quickly once I finish talking. Anyway, back to the game. Uh, the Amphitrite Express, right along the narrow gauge rails to Dover, where the, its fins extended and it plunged directly into the channel. Monsieur Fogg made no remark as the dark water pressed against our windows. I thought it was m so marvelous uh, at the time, but how many marvels were still to come? Thank you, now that it's speeding up. It's like 9 a.m. and 10 p.m., something like that, that they do the checks. We splashed up onto the rails at Calais and closed the remaining miles to Paris. Gare de Nure. Quickly, I don't know French by the way, and I'm sorry if I butchered the language or any language in this game. It seems, Monsieur Falk says, or said, the Orient Express, Express is now open through the Alps and Venice, or Alps to Venice. I'd check the market. Oh wait, how much is it worth in Venice? I'll get the Caribbean timetable. I'm sorry, I'm yawning, by the way. Railway cap. This, because I'm wanting to go to Venice. This. All in all, that costs us about 50 bucks. And then I will immediately sell the Caribbean timetable. I just want to learn as many routes as possible in order to know where I'm going and where I can travel.
Okay. Two bucks. I got two dollars back. Explore. Let's explore. Get the the trains. Oh wait a minute. The ex the exposition universal is sprawled over the grounds of the purpose built. Um, the, I'm gonna guess um, expo center. Uh, hot air balloons sailed gently across the sky and powdery light of the candles gleaming invitingly you know what no let's go to the expo Hmm, airship hangar. I inquire about an hourly rate. I wonder if perhaps the balloon could be encouraged to go a little way e away east as well and contribute to our great journey. Eight pounds for a half hour flight. The man responded. Not today, I think. I repeat swiftly. I replied swiftly. The man nodded and moved on to the next punter with great swiftness. Um. Um. Egyptian airship painted all over with stylish po uh, poppies and feathers it resembled nothing more than a vast flying sarcophagus they said the skies of arabia are crisscrossed at the trails of the egyptian ships perhaps one day soon monsieur fogg and i would find ourselves flying in such a craft after the exposition center um, my thoughts turning with clouds and engine rotors. Avenues sprawled in every direction, but the inviting illuminated pavilion of the exposition. Artificers Guild, uh, draped with banners and blazoned with the, uh, with their copper lily sigil. A steam-powered orchestra played gleaming brass instruments with a mechanical pop uh, with cork. Popped the cork from a champagne bottle and poured out bubbling over glasses passing tourists. Uh, automaton rummaging through his clockwork innards. Uh, he took out a piece of engraved glass and peered, um, dashing thing. He cursed <laughs> in upper class English tones and then, uh, looked up. Oh, hello! Give me a second. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt, I said politely. Oh, nonsense, young man, he waved the glass shape, shard dismissively. I'm trying to build an automaton that can cook, you see, but I'm not going, it's not going well. He looked mournful. This one can't even fry a chip. Surely humans are perfectly capable of, capable of cooking, he remarked. Do we need automata for such things? You have uh, n clearly never been to an English boarding school, he replied and shuddered. The things old Miss Parsons 
could do to a cabbage. The tender stomachs of British Britain's youth would be much safer in mechanical hands. <laughs> Jesus, do you cook yourself? Not a jot. <laughs> the other face replied cheerfully and then stroked his moustache. Because they've all got moustaches. Um, do you suppose that's the flying... That's the fly in the ointment. He thumped me on the back. Good thought, old chap. Perhaps I'll go and find myself a cook to model my automaton upon. Utterfizer smiled. I wish him well in his culinary endeavors. He was at least in the right city to find a cook. And returned to the center of the exposition, ears ringing with the bombastic tunes of the steam orchestra. Crowds of tourists jostled and heaved past, their eyes wide with wonder. I said, I decided to take my leave and return to Mr. Fogg, who was in, eating a meal of plain boiled beef. Did you enjoy the exposition? My master inquired definitively. Defin definitely. Having preferred a hearty meal in an English newspaper to all the wonders that the modern world had to offer, I declare, ah, my friends, how little I knew. I dreamed that night of mechanical wonders and automatons with beautifully enameled faces, Knowing little of the strange inventions and strange people I would soon encounter in my journey around the world. And I realized that I said in the beginning of this episode that um, this is going to be all in one episode. But unfortunately I cannot do that right now. Not because I don't want to, but because my voice is currently unable to do so. I would like to read out the things instead of just skipping through them like I did last time. But, unfortunately, my voice cannot record for an hour at, like I want. Um, because um, I've been screaming all day and my voice is next to shot. So, I will start recording. I will record more tomorrow to be able to record longer episodes but for right now i'm gonna have to leave this one off here and leave you guys disappointed probably not disappointed however anyway guys thank you so much for watching this please be like comment subscribe and as always i shall catch you guys in the next video have a great and wonderful day bye bye